Support Market OS version 23.06 was recently released. The biggest news is that the GNOME mobile interface is now integrated into the stable branch of the OS. So I installed it on my Pine phone and here's what the new interface looks like. Once the Pine phone is on, you will have to slide from bottom to top and then to type your password to unlock the smartphone. Then, on the home screen, you can swipe sideways to view all apps. But you can also search for an app, feature, or setting by typing its name in the search bar. If the virtual keyboard doesn't fold away on its own, slide it down. To open an application, just click on it. On the other hand, to leave the app, you will have to swipe up from the bottom of the screen. To close one or more apps, simply swipe it or them up again. To switch between the different apps open in the background, slide your finger sideways on the navigation bar. By holding and then sliding your finger on an application, you can change its location and even group several of them into a single folder. By lowering the notification bar, you can access the quick settings from which you can, for example, adjust the brightness or activate and deactivate Wi-Fi. By clicking on the arrow next to the Wi-Fi icon, you can display the list of all available networks without having to go to the settings. It's also possible to activate or deactivate mobile data with a single click, using the dedicated icon. Still in the quick settings, it's possible to activate or deactivate the dark mode by clicking on the dark style icon. There is also a screenshot function which allows you to either capture part of the screen. The whole screen. Or the running application. To take the screenshot, just click on the shutter and a notification will then confirm that it was taken. However, it lacks an option to turn on the flash of the smartphone. Note that the emojis are very similar to those of Android. One advantage of GNOME Mobile over Fosh is that, when you quit an application without saving, the pop-up asking if you want to save the changes appears by itself in the middle of the screen, and not in a separate window as on Fosh. Calls and SMS work well, although the layout when receiving calls could still be improved. You can also take photos using the Megapixels application. If you connect the Pine phone to an external screen, via the supplied adapter, or directly to a laptop, like here at the Murabook, you can use it as a computer. By default, you'll only have the mouse cursor on the secondary screen. You'll then have to click on the Windows and P keys at the same time, then select External only, on the smartphone screen, using the arrows and finally click on Enter to confirm. To launch a software, press the Windows key and then click on Show Apps. All you have to do is click on the software of your choice to launch it. You can then move the window, resize it or make it full screen. Note that it's not possible to bring up the system menu and the calendar by clicking. On the other hand, you can easily customize the dash by adding an application for example. If you launch Firefox, the browser will take 20 seconds to open. To perform a search, all you have to do is type on an external keyboard connected to the Pine phone, or directly on the laptop keyboard, if you have one. As you can see, the web pages are displayed in mobile format because the browser used is Firefox ESR, a modified version of Firefox, optimized to work best on a smartphone. Internet browsing remains fluid as long as you stay on lightweight sites. Here's what it looks like when you use several applications at the same time. Once you've disconnected the Pine phone from the external display, you can continue using your applications right where you left off. Note that this may not work with some applications requiring a large screen, such as the GIMP for example. That's the end of this video.
If you want to install Port Market OS with GNOME Mobile on the Pine phone, or on any of the other 31 compatible devices, just click on the link in the description.